Today we're going to do a working session because you all do have to raise money on a consistent basis. Sometimes it's equity, sometimes it's debt. Uh, recently I was with a company and they said, you know, we had to go out and raise uh, $5 million. So they spent six months with their bank and finally got the money in. I said, how was that burn? They said it was unbelievably difficult. So what I'm doing today is I'm going to take you through quickly something that normally takes days, but we're going to try to do it as fast as possible so you get the idea of what investors want to see. Doesn't matter whether they're the investor for uh, equity or for debt, they still need to have a presentation on who you are, what you do, how you do it, how they make money, how you mitigate risk. So if you think about an investor, every investor is looking for that opportunity that's perfect for them. It doesn't mean you match. So what we say is you have to go out and kiss a lot of frogs before you're gonna find that perfect investor. So what I recommend is put on your lip gloss, put on your chapstick, whatever it takes, get out there and kiss as many frogs as possible, as quickly as possible. The perfect match for you may not be a strategic investor. It may not be a bank. It may not be an alternative lender. It might be an angel investor. It might be a VC. But get ready fast and stay ready and stay nimble. Every investor wants to see different documents, it seems like. Every investor wants to hear a different presentation, it seems like. Everybody gives you advice. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this very simple, very straightforward, and I'm going to walk through the process of what they need to see no matter what format it comes in. So the deck that you're about to see was built specifically to build value in your company before you spring on them the price, how much money you're looking for. Why? Well, some investors will come to you, nicest guys in the world, including myself, and I'll say, hey, how much are you looking for? First thing I say. And they go, well, I'm looking for half a million. Now I'm going to value their speech against a half a million. What? you should do is sell value in your company first. So walking through this process, you want to think aggressively, okay? It's very important to think aggressively. You want to move very quickly. You want to engage investors when? Before you need them. I know CEOs, C-suite, you guys are busy. We're all busy, but guess what? A friend is going to be more apt to help you than somebody you just met yesterday. So spend the time, if you need to, with your banker. Spend the time with people around you. It's not them that will invest, it's their friends that will invest. And many times, they'll invest as a collective. So be prepared. When you're building the presentation, you want the presentation to be lightweight, fast, easy. You actually want to be able to give it at a cocktail party in conversation in less than five minutes. I raised more money at a cocktail party than I have sitting in front of investors. Because I get one person who says, I like what I hear, he grabs a couple of friends, they all get together, over the course of a two or three month period, I have commitment. Deal points, we'll talk briefly about that. The convertible note, if you're in a rush and you're raising equity, use it. Otherwise, you have to go through some significant documentation, a lot of legal fees, and then you can go out. And even then, the wrong attorney will create documents that are complicated and hard to understand for the investor, especially if you're dealing with an early stage investor. So imagine if I give you a complicated document that only I can read, well now, every time you have a question, who do you call? I get paid, if I was a lawyer. So be careful about how you put your documents together, make it very lightweight, very simple for everybody to understand. So the key drivers, a lot of people don't realize this about an investor. So, Buffett, this second statement is his statement. What is it that investors want? We know they want to make money. That's why they invest. What is the other thing that drives them either to you or away from you? To not lose money. It means in your whole presentation, you have to mitigate risk constantly. Always mitigate risk. And it sounds so simple, but if you think about the primal nature, of not losing money, it's much more powerful. Say, for example, you're an investor. For the last 30, 40 years, you've put away money. Now you have tens of millions, and somebody says they want some of it. 
You're like, oh boy, that took me 30, 40 years. I don't know if I want to give this guy any money. Sure, his idea might be good, but I don't know. So if you mitigate that risk, you have better chance of getting money. All right, we're going to zip right past this. We've talked about that. OK, so here we go. Introduction slide. Seems so simple. When you're pitching someone and you sit down, the first thing is you have to settle in. And a lot of times, investors don't settle in any faster than you do. So you start talking, and they, they don't even know what you said for the first two minutes. They're sitting there thinking about their phone, thinking about what they have to do. They're trying to engage, and finally they do. So what we say is make it the simplest slide in the world. The one over here, what it says is here's the company name tagline. Here's the name of the person standing in front of you. Super simple, because you want to move on as quickly as possible. You may want to state uh, something as simple as, here's what we do, here's how we do it, here's my background, because that's important, because I've done it before. All these things are important, but you want to state those verbally. Now remember, this is a presentation you're going to give to somebody, not a presentation you're going to send. I am not a true believer in sending out presentations to everybody and their mother. I think it's a waste of time. I can make a decision on, an, on a deck that you send me in minutes without ever meeting you. Because I'm looking at what I see and I'm going, eh, judgment, gone. So don't send out decks unless you have to. Two types of decks, of course, you can put all the words you want into another type of deck. It self-gives. It's an option. Okay. We get into the real world. You have not connected with me as an investor. I don't really understand much about what you do. So you've got to connect with me, and the best way to connect with me is to get me emotionally connected with what the problem is out there in the world. Now, it may be the opportunity for some companies, but there is an issue in the market that you're going to look at and handle. So make it very simple. You don't need a lot of pictures. You don't need a lot of information. Investors speak in two types of language, percentages and dollars. Think about it. How many of you sit down, look at your 401k, and you go, oh, I made money, $1,000. Oh, that's 1% up. That's not so good. That's how investors look at it, too. So don't think it's any different. Every slide should have something about dollars and cents. It ought to have something about the percentages, savings, or problems in the world. Be sure that you're consistent with that. Next. So you've got an investor in front of you who doesn't know anything about your company, doesn't know anything about you. And you have the solution. But your problem slide and your solution slide have different bullet points on them. They don't match. So imagine an investor trying to quickly, remember you're zipping through this, you could give it to him in 20 minutes, you could give it to him in two minutes, trying to figure out how you're solving the problems. So be sure that your problem slide matches your solution slide. Now why do I tell you this? I tell you this because with an angel group that I ran, we went from 5% of the companies we saw we would invest in up to over 30% of the companies we saw we invested in. This is the model that changed it all, and we trained all our CEOs. Because the messages were so disjunct, the slides were in such crazy order, nobody could figure it out. Next is your company status. Now, as an investor, am I investing in an individual? How many people in here have heard, oh yeah, I'm investing in you? So if you die, the company goes under. That's really smart of me. Not. It's not smart for an investor to invest in a person, but it is smart for an investor to engage that person on a friendly basis because they can learn more and more and more about your company as it goes along. So why wouldn't you do it? So what I'm saying here is you want to sell the company, the highlights of the things that you've done, how far you've come. If you want to put it in a chronological order, do that very simply. You have IP, you have secret sauce. But for example, when you talk about IP, I don't want to know what your IP uh, details are. What I want to know is what does your IP do for the company? 
So very simple statements. A lot of times uh, CEOs say, well, I, you know, I have to get an NDA signed before I can send this out. So what I do on the phone is I tell them the story about their company. And I say, did you tell me anything that's uh, IP? And they say, no. I say, then how did I tell you about your company? Remember, the first meeting with an investor has to be that you give them the basics, not everything. So you don't have to give them IP, you don't have to give them anything except the basics about your company. Have I seen 100 companies that have med devices in similar sp spaces? Pretty close. Have I seen 1,000 companies that want to be in social media? Probably more. So if you're doing something interesting, that's great. It might be interesting to you, maybe not that interesting to me. However, you might have a better team, a smarter process, a better roadmap, better partners, better channels, better business model, whatever it might be. Okay, so now you're down to the team. How many of you on your slide deck have put in that uh, we have a guy from IBM, he sold $200 million worth of equipment. He's the top sales guy. But you're selling a SaaS model. Well, wait a minute. If I'm an investor, I'm going, oh boy, disconnect. This guy either hired a friend or he doesn't understand his model. So what I recommend is a little line under each one of these guys' names that says relationship building with tier one clients, if that's what you're going after. If you're going after SMBs, be sure you talk about SMBs. Make it that simple. Because the investor is right now getting highlights as quick as he can get them. And you don't want to sit there and bog him down in a paragraph about somebody that really doesn't match up to what you're looking for. Here's another real handy little piece of advice. If you are doing an advisory board, advisory boards are wonderful, we all think. What's great about an advisory board? We have these specialists. They know my space better than I do. They can take me to companies. They can take me to partners. Well, what an investor wants to know is, did they put money into your company? Because if they're so well known and so well off that they didn't put money in your company and they've known you for years, why would I put money in your company? So if you don't have great advisors that have put money in, don't put them up there. If you have excellent advisors that are valuable, figure out a way to put a note up there. So for example, you can say that, uh, that their access to the channel is vital because of their history, but they may have a conflict of interest to take stock or something like that. So be sure you handle it. Next, the market. This is where everybody gets a little confused. Think about, I don't know if anybody out here knows uh, Alfred Hitchcock, but back years ago, Alfred Hitchcock invented something that I call the Hitchcock. I'm sure he probably did as well where he would start a movie and he'd start way off in space and he would come down to this dot called Earth and then he'd zoom over to this country, the US, and then he'd go down to a state, a city, and a man on the street holding a newspaper. That's what we want to see as an investor. We want to see you go big market all the way down to target market and how you're going to reach that target market. Next is how are you going to reach that target market? A lot of times people think, well, I'm going to advertise. I'm going to uh, do social media. That's not what we want to hear. We want to hear that you're smarter than that. We want to hear that you know your customer so well and you know where he hangs out and what time of day he's there that you know how to get right to him. Now, remember, this is a presentation you're going to give to somebody. So you're going to fill in the blanks. You may not put all the information up there, but while you're talking to them, you may say, well, we have a relationship with a social media company, specifically in MedTech, that already has 10,000 target customers in it. Now I'm gonna trust you more. Next is the business model. This slide, for some reason, gets left out of about half the presentations I see. In fact, I got a presentation last night in there, I zipped through it in about two seconds. A little two-page executive summary, which is easy for me to read. 
and I realize they haven't told me how they make money. Well, if you didn't tell me how you're going to make me money, why would I give you money? Now, in your head, it's there. I know it is because you started a business. But get it onto paper. And I like it very simply into a format of an equation. Retail, $1,000. Manufactured cost, $100. Profit, overhead, boom. Net rev. I want to see that. I want to see it simple. And this is a great place to do it. Remember that even though you may repeat concepts from one slide to another, the investor remembers only 5% of what you say. So if you repeat what's on the slide and you repeat different ways of saying things throughout the deck, you're getting multiple hits, so he's going to remember more. Next is your competition. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen complicated competition slides that if I was sitting in front of that person, I would ask them to spend an hour on it just so I could understand it. Because they know their market so well, which is awesome. But that's not what I need right now. I need something fast and furious. So that little tiny chart down there, you can instantly see who has the better product. And now you as the CEO can back up that information. You can talk about the competitive challenge that you meet. You can talk about your advantages in the market. You might even speak to one or two of those different areas that are specific to you, that are special. I know that's the simplest financial chart in the world, but that's all we want to see. Later we'll want to see more, but don't kill us with numbers because you'll be there all day. I'll give you a little uh, story. I'm sitting in a uh, presentation. There are about 40 plus investors. We are infatuated, you can feel it in the room, with this company presenting. CEO did a great job. One hand goes up in the room. Gentleman says, you know, on your financials on sell, I think it was on 2018, about the 12th sell down or 13th sell down, that number doesn't seem to exactly jive with your, uh, with your expected revenue that year. Simple question. It was a complicated spreadsheet. CEO goes back to the slide. CFO sitting right in front. CEO goes, which one? Where? CFO goes, oh, I think it's this one. He says, no. Within less than one minute, nobody wanted to do business with that company because they didn't know their numbers. Well, what really happened was it was complicated. They put too much up here. So make it simple. That's the easy way to see a spreadsheet. And if you want to have a backup, bring it on paper. But it's not part of the deck. Keep it simple. Then at the bottom, you see that little tiny bullet down there, list one or two assumptions? Think of it this way. You have spots throughout your deck that you can put key information into, that you can use as an aha moment, a story, whatever it might be. So let's say in year one, you were projecting 10 customers. When you built the financials, 10 customers, that's great. Oh, guess what? We look like we're going to close 14 customers. We're already at 10. We're only six months in. Wow. Aha moment. Assumptions were 10. Mr. Investor, guess what? We're at 10 right now, six months into the year. We think we'll do 14. Investor goes, wow. Aha. These guys are moving. They're beating their own numbers. So you'd be surprised as to where you can put numbers and how you can make them into aha moments, including things like spread. I was with the CEO the other day. He said, you know, our, we have no revenue. I said, how much? He goes, no, 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 it's a spec. How much do you have? He goes, 2000 a month. I said, OK, what would you do in January? He goes, $500. I said, when did you hit the 2000 mark? In March. I said, that's fast growth. You might want to talk about that, maybe, to an investor. He only saw the money. I saw the growth. A lot of people get nervous about the dollars and cents. Don't let it get into your head. Remember, if you execute, 
investors want you. If you don't execute, doesn't matter. So finally, you get down to the ask. You can feel a sweat dripping. The emotions tense. This investor or group of investors now, they want to know why they should put money in. But you were smart. You built a story, a success story, and now you're coming down to the simple part, the ask. So you go back to how much money was initially invested, which you did have back on your company status slide. Then you talk about where that money's going to go, how you're going to use it. And then you talk about what the deal looks like to them. Now, I have seen a thousand different ways of putting dollars and cents on a slide. And I'm going to tell you, the investor is trying to figure it out quickly. Don't make it complicated. If you're going to do a uh, convertible note, three pieces of a convertible note need to be on there. Okay. If you're going to do straight equity, the price per share, valuation. Give them a starting point. Don't make their life any tougher than it is. The whole idea is you're trying to get these things across very quickly. It's OK if they balk at that moment. Get them into a due diligence discussion later. You can always sweeten a deal. People say, you know, have you ever done a down round? Not one. First company was 1988. Never did a down round. How did you do that? Sweeteners, warrants, option pools, all types of methods. But don't sit there and get stuck on this page and wear out your welcome. Keep things moving. So the next thing is the recap. Remember, that guy has just now heard everything at 100 miles an hour. His brain is fried. He's trying to remember everything. So leave him with the salient points. And here's another great place for an aha moment. When you get down to the very bottom there, it says roadmap. Well, if you leave him with a great story right here, now he's got something to tell his buddies that are investors as well. So think about, well, you know, we're just going after this segment of the market today. However, in two years, we will be ramped up to handle this segment, this segment, and this segment. Or we're going to sell off each one of our products separately, so they're all going to be under wholly owned subsidiaries. So, Mr. Investor, you're going to get five hits over a five-year period, not one. Always leave them with something that's positive they can carry with them. And finally, the most left out slide on any deck anywhere in the world, the thank you slide. Now, the thank you is a nice, subtle way of saying, appreciate your time. However, there's something else going on here. You got to the end of the deck. Your information should be at the bottom or somewhere on that page because now they've looked at it, they've heard you, they want you to send them a copy, they go to the end of the deck, they want to reach out to you. If they have to go shuffling through the deck to find you, a little bit of a pain in the butt for them. And remember, shiny penny effect. Oops, I got another deal right here. Oops, I got another deal right here. Oops, I got another deal right here. They see 50 deals a month. So make it really simple on them. And if you put all your information somewhere else in the slide deck, they have to go hunt. That's tough. But worse than that, I have seen more decks, more executive summaries without any contact information on them at all. So I tell you, put that slide in. It's a great way to finish your deck and to move people on because they know you're done. And I'm going to open up to Q&A. Thank you all. So one of the things I will tell you is you have a leg up over all men. Okay, Women have a leg up, but they think they need to copy the man's style. Not true. Biggest mistake in the world. You want to be who you are. You know your subject matter. You know what's going on. You have warmth. You have connectability. Those are key elements in getting an investor. Of course, you don't want to take that far, but you just want to have those emotions and things going on. But you also want to get the facts across quickly. Um, I'm not a big believer in trying to do a presentation where people uh, laugh and they enjoy the presentation that you gave on the company that you're trying to raise money for. I want to get that out of the way as quickly as possible to see if the C-suite people can lead 
Remember, we're investing in those smart guys. We're investing in those people that say they can lead. So if you're not the leader of the company, if you're not the CEO, you better train that CEO. If you are the CEO, then you need to have that beauty, warmth, confidence that everybody wants. It really is actually better for you than it is for me. Does that make sense? You know, I haven't looked at the stats lately. Uh, women have come a long way in the last five years. I have looked at the angel groups. In fact, we did an enormous amount of recruiting on the women's side, trying to get the diversity into the room so that they could invest better. A lot of it was training both sides, guys and girls, could, they just don't know how to invest very well. I don't know what's going on out in the community, except I'll tell you that a lot of the companies that I see that come from women are smart companies, but the woman isn't engaging me and my other investors at the level. You speak very well. You come across very straight and consistent, as do you. Those are key elements when I see a pitch. I don't want a, a mommy pitch, but I also don't want a guy to do a daddy pitch. You spend money to make money in growing a company, but a mommy and daddy have to save money to have money at the end. So you, I don't know what the actual answer is for you, but uh, it's best I can do. Yes, sir. This is all over the map. It has to do with the individual and the group. So many groups tell you they want it in 5, 10, 15 minutes. Others will give you more time. Here's what I believe. I believe that you keep it as short and concise as possible. The longer you stand up there, the easier it is to make multiple mistakes, to misspeak, or to start expanding while you're thinking. Don't think and talk. If you don't know the answer, tell them you'll get the answer. But if you're thinking and talking, which really looks like this, what I really want to say to you is that I think there's great ways to do certain types of Everybody knows what you're doing. They may not recognize it as thinking and talking. Keep it concise, keep it simple. Cocktail party, less than five minutes, I can pitch any company. Doesn't matter how technical, how complicated, doesn't matter. So if you get up in front of an audience and you can pitch them in five minutes and they gave you 10, happy days. The investors will love you. Yes? Okay, so an advisor can be called a mentor and a mentor can help you. But an advisor in a company, they get stock. Many times they'll get five, 10,000 shares a year for helping you. Many times though, they should spend the money to help you. Now, every issue is different, but I would tell you this. If you're gonna go out and get a bunch of advisors and put them on your slide deck, it's not gonna help you a lot. You might put two or three key ones on there and that's it. Anything after that, they're mentors. So if somebody says to you, well, how did you get into Walmart? Well, you know, I have a mentor who has taught me how to get into Walmart. Keep it clean. Does that answer everything for you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, when you're doing a simple slide like this, combine, simple. You can say to them that service and product, but don't make it complicated in a presentation. That's a drill down question. All right, thank you everybody.